Hello again, we, we come to the sixth session in our series on discipleship, which is linked to the Salvation Army's vision for the territory. Welcome and hem, leave it me, Jesus. And we have been making this important point that that vision about a home, a spiritual home, that is also the place where we spend our lives sharing life with Jesus, that that is, a, a, in essence, the description of what discipleship is. Discipleship is, in essence, life with Jesus, being at home with Jesus. So it is important for the, for the theme and for the vision of this territory that we understand the importance of discipleship in the local core, but, but also discipleship for the individual member of the Salvation Army. Last time we started on a three-part series of looking at discipleship in the church, discipleship in the church, and we looked at the church gathered and the church sent. We said that there were, there were two parts to being church. We are the church gathered in worship and to receive from God, and we are the church sent to give to those who need to hear about the kingdom of God. Today, we're going to be looking at three other elements of what it means to be disciples in the church. And they're going to be challenging, I would think. We're going to be looking at the church growing. We're going to be looking at the fact that Jesus' church is not a church that is in decline. It is not a church that is dying. It is not like a flower that is fading away. It, it is a, a, a growing, vital, dynamic body. The church growing, and we see this in Acts chapter 2. And then we're going to look at a, a topic that is a challenge for many salvationists in the Western world. The church giving, the church giving. And that we'll, we'll base on 2 Corinthians chapter 8 in the first eight verses, the church giving. And then finally, the church's gifting, the fact that, that we in the church receive various gifts and abilities which we are supposed to use together in order to do mission in the church. And we're going to be looking at 1 Corinthians chapter 12, and then also Ephesians chapter 4, which is a very important uh, chapter when it comes to understanding the role of the church in terms of mission. The church growing, the church giving, and the church, the church's gifting. So firstly, the church growing. In Acts chapter 2, after um, the the dissension of the Spirit on the believers as they prayed, what we call Pentecost, we see that the, the church exploded in growth. And we see this happening very often um, throughout church history. The, the Salvation Army is an example of this. When William Booth started the Salvation Army, it exploded in growth. It, it, was, it was a phenomenal um, expression of church growth in those early days. The same thing happened when the army came to Sweden, came to Latvia. There was an explosion of growth. We were at a core yesterday, and we, we listened with amazement that this core in this little town had over 300 soldiers at one stage. There was a band of 30. There was a singing group of over 40 members that the young people were were, there were many young people in the core, many children, many youth, an explosion of growth. And, and therefore, it should be a challenge to us today. Why is it that we are not seeing this explosive growth, this dynamic manifestation of the, of the people of God, of the church of God? The church should be a growing, a growing organism. And in verses 37 to 40 of Acts chapter 2, we read that when the crowd heard the gospel, 
when the crowd heard the gospel, they were stung to the heart. They, their consciences were pricked. They, they were moved by the Spirit of God. So the first thing I want to say is that there needs to be a sharing of the gospel with the world. We need to do better at sharing the gospel. Not only in organized campaigns, but just in our daily lives. Those early salvationists that I'm talking about, where there were explosive growth. It wasn't the officers who were organizing evangelical campaigns that brought people to Jesus. It was people working with their comrades and sharing the gospel with their comrades and their friends and their families and their neighbors that brought people into a living faith with Jesus Christ. And it started with invading their thoughts and their lives with the gospel of Jesus. When the crowd heard the gospel, then it's over to God through the Spirit to bring conviction. Verse 41 we read that they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. They were brought into the church through the action of the Spirit and not through any action of the church. They were filled with the Spirit. Those who believed were filled with the Spirit. They were brought into the church. They became part of the church. And then in verse 42, they devoted themselves to instruction and to fellowship. In other words, they started learning. They started becoming uh, disciples of Jesus Christ. If you look at this, you see it is the same pattern which Jesus gave the church when he gave them the Great Commission. Invade, he said, go with the gospel. Baptize them, incorporate them into the church through the, through the baptism of the Spirit. And then he says, instruct them, teach them everything that I've commanded you. The church grew in Acts because they followed what Jesus had instructed them to do in Matthew 28. Go, baptize, incorporate, and instruct. Teach them to do everything I've commanded you to do. I'm, I'm encouraging you as the church to be a church that is growing. And that can only happen if we follow this pattern which Jesus gave the church through the Great Commission, the church growing. Now we come on to this whole question of Christian stewardship, the, the giving of my time, the giving of my, of my talents, and the giving of my treasure to God. Stewardship, Christian stewardship, the church giving. In 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verses 1 through 8, we read about something that is quite Amazing. It is about a church that is very poor, and even in their poverty, they are committed to giving generously, to giving sacrificially. And this happened, of course, 2,000 years ago. The Macedonian church was a poor church, and they were committed to giving to the work sacrificially and generously. Now, I want you to know something. This happened 2,000 years ago. This is happening today in the Salvation Army. There are, there are Salvationists in Africa and in Asia who are a lot worse off than us economically. And yet, percentage-wise, they give more to the work of God than we do. Po impoverished salvationists who are giving sacrificially and generously to the work of God, sometimes exceeding what we in the West are able to give. Why is it that the Macedonian church could do this? Why is it that African salvationists are able to, to give in a way that far exceeds what we give in the West? First of all, look at the inspiration behind their given, giving. The grace of God poured out upon the churches of Macedonia. These churches were inspired because they were so overwhelmed with the consciousness of the grace of God. And that's what's happening in Africa. 
Salvationists are just overwhelmed with the grace of God that is poured out on them. Marianne and I were often amazed as we sat in churches in core where salvationist after salvationist would stand up and in their testimonies speak about terrible, terrible, challenging experiences they were going through. And yet they were, con they were still overwhelmed with the grace of God to the point where there was joy in, on their faces despite the problems that they were facing. The grace of God poured out upon the churches of Macedonia. And perhaps we need to get back to those simple things again, to become overwhelmed and inspired by the grace of God, because it is the inspiration behind giving that we, that we become aware again of God's grace to us. Verse 2 of 2 Corinthians 8 says, From their extreme poverty, they gave an act of extravagant generosity. From extreme poverty came an act of enormous, extravagant generosity. Now, I cannot understand people who don't have enough giving so extravagantly to the work of God. And yet I've seen it in my experience in Africa, people giving generously despite their own challenges. And then in verse 3 we read, they spontaneously gave far beyond what they could afford. The immensity of their giving is an example to us. Dear friends, the Salvation Army, like any other church, is dependent on the giving, the generous, extravagant giving of its members. And I would encourage us to look very seriously at this point of discipleship. It is something that we have just ignored for years and years in the Salvation Army. Perhaps as long as the Salvation Army has existed in Sweden, we have just not been generous enough in our giving. And I want to challenge you that as much as discipleship involves many elements, it also involves this idea of giving generously to the work. And here we see a model of it in the Macedonian church. And if you want a modern day version of it, just look at the way that Africans and Asians give to the work of the Lord. They give immensely above what they are able, like the widow who gave of her last in order to bless the work of God. The church giving, I'm challenging you to become part of the generosity of the church giving. <clears throat> And then finally, there is the idea of the church gifting. The fact that all of us, as soon as we become, become part of the family of God, as soon as we are welcomed home and we start our life with Jesus, we are endowed with a gift, at least one gift from God. And that gift is there to, according to Ephesians chapter 4, build up the body, the, the ministering gifts of building up the body. And we, we know about APEST uh, here. APEST is getting a particular function. And I would encourage you in your core to start examining what APEST means. And if you need help, that uh, we will provide that help for you. APEST, the ministering gifts, the gifts of enabling us to do the mission of the, of the church the mission of the salvation of Ephesians chapter 4. In 1 Corinthians 12, we see that to each one, the manifestation of the Spirit is given. In other words, every one of us has something from the Spirit that we can use to bless the body of Christ, to bless the church. All of us have it. And if you don't know what that manifestation, that gift is, I would ask you, to find out what your gift is, and I would ask you to use that gift to bless the church and to bless the mission of the church. And then in Romans 12, we read that we don't all have the same gifts. We have different gifts according to the grace that is given to us, according to the decision 
that the Spirit makes, we have different gifts. You know, uh, I'm very bad when it comes to practical things. It's a joke at home that my wife will never ask me to do anything practical because I just my hands, they just don't work. But I'm pretty good with my mouth, and I'm pretty good with writing um, things. So, so I know where my gifts are, my wife knows where her gifts are, and together we make a good couple. And that's how God has ordained it. He has ordained it that in the church we have diversity of ability in order for the church to function as a whole. Here we have it, these three aspects of being church. A vital church, the church growing. A generous church, the church giving. And a functioning church, a church that is actually able to function in mission, the church's gifting. I would encourage you to speak about it. I would encourage you to reflect on it. And I would encourage you to act upon it in Jesus' name. May God bless you.